You know what color sucks to paint? Yellow. But also it's an awesome color and you want to paint it, right? So here's how you do it. I figure out three different easy and game-changing ways to paint yellow using different tools and different techniques, demonstrating and no matter the tools and the skill level you have, you can produce great results. Starting off with number one, I'm gonna use a magenta base coat and the stippling techniques, sort of. This first one is heavily influenced by Richard Gray's technique for game level stuff, but also I'd like to think that I have my unique spin on it. It's a nice technique because it creates textures without creating actual textures. From a magenta base coat, I start with ochre diluted to a slightly thinner consistency than layering. And using a very soft makeup brush that I got from somewhere, I stipple the color in. Then I proceed to blend the edges, if need be, by using the wet brush to feather and stipple. I mean, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes people get too stuck giving names to things when it's supposed to be like more natural, especially because we're talking about art, you know? So call it whatever, it's this thing here, okay? I don't really know how to call this technique, but yeah, I'm stippling in the color and if there's too much paint, I clean the brush on a wet sponge and then tap it off on my finger and blend the edges. This creates uh, an orange tone and it's kind of cool. I then do the same thing in a slightly smaller area using a brighter yellow, some kind of bad moon yellow in the old school range. And the process is pretty much the same. The final step is to stipple by using a detail brush. This is not mandatory if you don't feel like doing that. It's, it's fine, whatever. Do whatever you want. I'm not offended by it. I then proceeded to block in all the black parts and the metallic parts to get more sense of what I was doing. This is a very important step because it makes everything more clear. For this job I'm using Contrast Paint Black Templar because it gives a little bit more transparency but in the end it really doesn't change that much so you can use regular black if you want. Time to add some grime and dirt by using Streaking Grime from AK Interactive, aka my favorite thing ever. And here I can hear you say Well, actually, that kind of sounds like my internal voice. Actually, it's gonna show through because I'm applying streaking grime just to dirty up the surface and creating nice separation between the panels. Basically, I'm gonna use a brush with mineral spirits and Q-tips to clean out the surface, creating interesting pattern and textures and revive that magenta base coat underneath. The only slightly big mistake I made here was not to apply decals before spraying the streaking grime. So don't be like me, apply your decals before. And now the first model is done. Let's move on to number two, orange base coat and airbrush. This is where I try to be a little bit more clean and precise with the blends. So I'm gonna show you that you can achieve great results with an airbrush without actually know how to use it. Because if I can do it, I mean, I suck at that, so... After priming black and base coating with mahogany brown, I apply a layer of off-white following the shape of the meringue. That's a pretty easy thing to do. Once you learn where to place the highlights, you don't even need to study the volumes. Just place a semi-spherical highlight on the shoulder pad, kinda in the middle, and then in the center of every cylinder on the legs. From here, you can use your favorite contrast paint to glaze the color over this pre-shading. I, I don't have Imperial Fist yellow because I'm cheap and I didn't buy it for this video. Please subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> But also because I wanted to have a more saturated and less pale yellow, since we have that orange base coat. Like I did in the previous marine, I'm blocking in with black all the parts that are not yellow and the metallics as well. I then apply the decals before spraying it with matte varnish. The, the last step for this model here is panel lining. That provides separation and contrast to your model. In this case I'm using oils, but you can use whatever you want. You can use contrast paints, you can use contrast paints, you can use whatever, really, up to you. The one that's dry, we're pretty much done. And then it's up to you to decide if you want to grind this up a little bit, maybe in a slightly controlled way, or if you want to keep it clean, maybe add a few hedge highlights. I'm not gonna do that because I hate hedge highlighting. Deal with it. Moving on. 
Number three is flat base coat. That's it. We'll start off with a base coat of bright and yellowish, yellow, yellow, yellowish. You have many ways to achieve this bright yellow. Personally, I just primed the model white and then proceeded to base coat it with a bright yellow. That's it. But you can do it many ways. You can use contrast paint with a brush, contrast paint with an airbrush, you can spray acrylics or just paint it with acrylics. The important thing is that you don't start from black primer because yellow on black it creates kind of a greenish color that's awful. Don't do that, please. Or you know, you can spray with a sandy primer and then apply a bright yellow. After doing that, the first thing we're gonna do is to do a pin wash or dark lining. But instead of using contrast paints or panel liners or blah, 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 the usual boring way, I will use this cool new product AK Interactive kindly sent me eight months ago. If you don't have these, which I suggest you do, you can use regular pigments and thin them down with a little bit of white spirit. Or you can even use acrylics, but they won't give the same dusty, grimy look. Well, anyway, I applied this in the recesses, but also in the shin area to give it a dusty overall look. When the effect seems a little bit too much, I simply rub the excess off with a Q-tip. I then proceed to fill with black contrast paint all the parts of the armor that are not yellow, including metallics and yada yada yada. Here you have to be kinda careful because applying black on yellow armor, if you make a mistake, is gonna be hard to clean, so don't be like me. I also used the same Black Templar contrast paint to create some chips and the armor. Even though this wasn't really planned, it was mostly to hide my mistakes. <laughs> And here you go, three simple ways to paint one of the hardest colors out there. Hope you try them out soon. If you like more the grim dark side of the force, here's a video for you.